Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. You guys know how much I love the right tools to work with, right? And you know I've done a lot of different things with different types of power meters. I've rode several of them out there. And I came across Pioneer and absolutely was like, oh my gosh. Like, I, I think I've told you this before, but obviously, I was born and loved the 80s, and every stereo system I ever wanted or dreamed of, Pioneer created, right? So you, you had the logo in your head, and when I saw them in this space, I'm like, excuse me, but what the hell are they doing in cycling, right? I mean, that's what went through my head first. And then I was like, man, they were so amazing, though, in the stereo world and that kind of thing. But anyway, my point is this. Once you start to dig into what Pioneer is doing right now, all kid aside, you're going to be blown away. These guys are so far ahead in the power space that it's mind blowing. And I, and I mean that. You guys know on my channel, I don't fluff anything. I ride stuff, I test it, and then I come to you, right? Well, I've done exactly that. So what I've done is, we've got this on my bike. I have put a lot of miles on this power meter with their head unit, and I'll explain why we use the head unit. And we started to collect data. Now, David is the guru brains, like he knows how to take this data, different things like that, and really explain it. Because I, I know what it's doing, I know how to look at the different things. I don't know how to explain it as well as he does on a technical end and, and dummy it down for us, okay? So the one thing I will tell you when you ride and you start to have this head unit, and you can't see it from that angle, but you can kind of see it if you can. See how it has the left and the right pedal right here, and you can, you can line this out with all sorts of fields. You will look at your pedal stroke for hours. Like it is so, I don't know why it's so fascinating, but it's like I can pedal and watch a half hour go just like that by just going, okay, I'm trying to get my pedal stroke just perfect, right? And playing with that. So David, kind of break this down, explain the data, explain why this is gonna take the average cyclist. Cause we, you know, I mean, it's great. The pros are great. You know, we all know that. We love them. We idolize those guys. But reality is, is the average guy, right? Yep. We still want to be as cool as the pro, yep. but we need to get that data. And you've got some yep. cool stuff going on. Yep. So take it away. I'm going to just sit and listen <laughs> and let you talk. All right. Yeah, a, a power meter on a bicycle is all about how much weight can you lift and how long can you hold it. All power meters do that. What we wanted to do is find out how much of that weight you're lifting is really moving you forward. And that's where our engineers really hit a home run, I think, with their ability to manipulate fit file data and create their own higher definition data field. We're measuring more than the other guys on the crank arm, meaning the good force moving you forward, but also the bad force that's using up your energy down the arm. Okay. And then we're sampling it 12 times per rotation. Sampling. CDs, laser discs, yeah. music, yeah. same sampling. thing. Yeah, exactly. Sampling. So we sample more than the other guys. 12 times per leg, 24 points, telling you how much of the force on the arm at that point, one o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, backside, nine o'clock, yeah, yeah. how much of that is moving you forward and how much of it's not, is holding you back. David, can I ask a question really quick sure. right here? So I try to use this analogy when I'm trying to talk to people on fit sometimes that they'll, they'll have their legs so tied up, right, that they, yep. they're really not getting power out. And I say, well, look, if I was gonna hit David right in the chops right now, do I wanna be right here? Or do I want to be right here where I can get that full leverage, right? right? And so I think that's what you're kind of talking about. Yes, I mean, I'm just trying to dummy it down. Yes. Is Where is that optimal bam? So when I connect, we've really got that. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Okay. That's exactly just right. want to make sure that and we're on. it's natural. So by measuring all of the forces, good and bad, on the crank arm, on both arms, all the forces divided by the good forces equals efficiency. Planes, trains, boats, physics, everything. Right. You bet. So now we know of mm -hmm. all the energy you put onto each pedal arm, how much of it's good and how much of it's bad, where the good is, where the bad is, and we map it for you on your on your computer. Yeah. On so, the head unit. On the head unit. So that data comes up and we can analyze it and after ride. Right. So for you, I can see your total rides. Looks like you've been riding with us. You've been yeah. going long distances. Yeah. You got good power. Um, took a little break. Did here. you hear that, everybody? He said I had good power. Yeah, pretty I good love power. David. <laughs> Riding in the mountains a little bit. Yeah. Um, here's your three month, what we call an MMP. This is key. We all know what we can do for an hour is called FTP. Right. What can you do for 20 minutes? What uh -huh. can you do for five minutes? Uh -huh. 
So that chart is, we all have our, our, our chart. Okay. Our system knows this chart all the time. Okay. It knows it on the computer all day long. You can watch it and say, I am really close to being hitting my five minute best power. Hmm. It's right there, 80%. You get there, do you go for it? You got two hours to ride. You right. really want to go for it? Right. Okay, yeah. so that's one of the things that we're doing that's really interesting is I'll go into one of your rides okay. and into the deeper dive. So now let's see your pedal efficiency and your pedal stroke, uh, where the power is and where the power isn't. Okay. The individual ride. And here's that same chart we were looking at. This is actually a year out. But what I really want to look at is your pedal stroke in real okay. time. All right. So first, I'm going to look at it for the whole ride. Okay. Oh, here it comes. There we go. Okay, so let me turn the average for the whole ride off. This is also your pedal stroke here. Just a different way of looking at the same thing. Okay. So as we go through time, the good forces, the bad forces, tangent forces, radial forces. These correspond to these. So there's the three o'clock point. There's where all your power should be. Your left leg, there's some radial. It's a, maybe like it's a little bit far back on your seat, a millimeter or two, but it's called a radial kick in some spots. Okay. So at three o'clock, it's not bad at all, but it's there. That three o'clock, the most power would be straight down line. Okay. Three o'clock. Right so down to the ground. You would suggest to the fitter if he was looking at this, like if I was getting my fit done again, that yep. that's something we would address. Let's move you a couple millimeters forward. Forward, okay. Another thing, now, you know, a bike fit is a very detailed sure. deal. This is real time while you're riding, you're right. moving around, who right. knows? But it's a good hint at what might be going on right. uh, to get you a little bit more power. Okay. So the only reason I was going to show you is, is they've got this set up, so I'm going to have him zoom in. But what you're seeing right here and what he's talking about, and the reason this is important is, is I can be pedaling right as I'm pedaling, I'm seeing this on my screen real time. Yep. So I can adjust my pedal stroke and understand if I'm getting tired or whatever I'm doing, how to do that real time right here on the head unit. But when I come back to here, I'm not seeing something totally different or foreign. No. I can see it right here and line it up of what I've had right here and absolutely. I just want to clarify that's that because it's, it's, right. it's very uh, it, it's really real as you're doing this okay David go ahead yeah sorry so you can see what's happening here in real time and again it's a power meter so you're seeing your total power you're seeing your each legs individual power yeah that was what I was just gonna say so one thing that you may not know and you need to know on this power meter is it is a full-on power meter on the left and a full-on power yeah. meter on the right they're separate they're they're the same, but they're separate. Yeah, we're Pioneer, it's stereo. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Let's it's truly actually. stereo. Yeah. So you're, you're really good. I mean, 73 watts on your left, 74 on your right for the whole ride average. That could have just been the stop sign and you started on your right foot, a little more juice for the average. Okay. But balance wise, you look really good. Okay. What I do see is this bottom six o'clock, uh -huh. that's radial force. Okay. That's the crank arm. And when you stand on it, mm -hmm. That's power that you're p pushing into the arm that is not moving you anywhere. Oh, got you. So that's radial. So wasted power. Wasted power. Saying. Okay. Now you may not have a lot of energy going into that, but it is still wattage that is being driven right into the ground. Okay. Maybe a little higher seat. Raise the seat Maybe. a little Maybe, just okay. a little. Gotcha. And depending on where you were at and what kind of ride this was, if it mm -hmm. was at an average power of 147, you were working it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a small, um, so, uh, your efficiency, which is this number here, could be higher. Okay. For this amount of power, for your size, 40% uh, or more. Wow. Yeah. So a human being pedaling a bike is only in the 30s, 40% efficient. Of all okay. the energy going into the crank arm, only that much of it's actually moving you forward. So that's what we can show you is where you can improve that. Right. And even a pro on an all-on sprint, as efficient as possible, 70% wow. for a short period of time. Okay. So don't feel bad about this number. I was 100%, about ready to go home and start crying. hundred <laughs> percent would be a machine turning the crank arm. Oh, yeah. Literally would have to be a machine. Right. A human being on a bike kind of has to pick 
12 to 3, 3 to 6. Mm -hmm. Pick your poison. Okay. Which one do you want your power band at optimized? And then try and optimize the rest as best you can. Gotcha. Okay. So this is subliminal in your mind. Once you see this on the bike on real time and after ride analysis, it is knowledge is power. Because it's there and you're aware of it, you will adjust to it. Yeah, you do. You, you start do. watching. Yeah. You just start so adjusting. So now I'll instantly start watching this now that I know this better, right. obviously. Right. Yeah. Make minor, small adjustments. Right. Live with the product. We're not going to fix you overnight. Right. We're only going to give you, you know, uh, th these are pretty strong hints, though, of what might be holding a little bit of power back. Sure. But the overall power number is the same as, you know, we're measuring power 2% accuracy. Same as everybody else. Uh, we're thermal compensating for different degrees of temperature. We're extremely accurate in all weather conditions. <clears throat> and then we're giving you a complete system. Right. From the power meter, pedaling monitor, computer, after ride analysis. Awesome. So <clears throat> what other things, I mean, I know right now, so let's talk about this really quick. How many times are you reading in that pedal stroke? Data we are points. I mean, sampling 12 points per rotation. Okay, 12 points. 12 points. How? So 24 total for both legs. Okay, and how many are the average power meters out there? One. Right? Does that give you any idea, guys? So think about that. Let's yeah. think just common sense, right? If you've got that many, that's why in here he's able to say, without a doubt, this is a lack of power because they've got so many sampling through there that that can be accurate. Yep. If it's only sampling one time, that's a guess in my opinion. It would be. It'd you know, be, I mean, yeah, right. I don't want to name compressed sure. audio format. This is sure. HD. This gotcha. is high def data. Yeah, good way to put it. Yeah. Okay, so the other cool thing is, is that they have out there is, and this is something you've got to decide. And I, I'm not going to lie to you that it's not a struggle for me because I love my Garmin head unit yeah. for, for several reasons. Yeah. I, I really do. I like it because I get my texts on it and I'm a family guy, so I'm riding. I love to, my kids text me, it's like, oh, I better stop, you know? That all being said, I don't know how I, like, when I don't have my Pioneer head unit now to ride with, I almost feel like I'm not getting my data. Like, I want to see where this is at or that's at. And, and I love the customization of it. They've done some things that are really, really cool. So talk about your head unit just for a second, would you? We love our head unit. Yeah, of course. Well, we understand, um, but the touch screen capability of it, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, all weather, gloves or not, right. you can swipe to any screen you That's want. Right. You can get to, <clears throat> what do we count, over 200 <clears throat> data points. Right. Chunk, 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 six. Yeah. Um, the other is easily configurable. Just hold the box, press yeah. it, t tell it what you want to see, and it's there. Right. Um, it's Wi-Fi, yeah. so as soon as you get home and hit the reset button, up it goes, it's Wait here. Wait until you get home, are you kidding me? I just have it synced to my phone. Yeah, so to your phone, there you go, hotspot, <laughs> up it goes. Once it gets to Cyclosphere, yeah. then you can push it out to your favorite training peaks or to right. Strava or wherever. Right. And you could take a fit file and download it. You bet. Um, the, uh, it's a two-way communication computer. This is not just reading and displaying information, but it's transmitting as well. That's right. So let me ask you another question, um, just because it popped in. When I use my Garmin, I have to put it in one format. When I use this, okay. I use another, right? Yeah. Is there reasoning behind that? And can you talk about that just for a second? So our pedaling monitor system works yes. with our computer right. at a higher frequency than an Ant Plus computer can understand. Okay. So. When you buy our cranks, yes. whether single arm or dual leg, right. they're going to come amp plus ready to pair with an amp plus computer, of which course. this is amp plus. You could pair it as a power meter. You bet. But if you have our computer, you might want to open up those other three strain gauges per arm. Right. Because in the amp mode, it only knows one strain gauge per arm, just right. power. Right. With our computer, now we want to measure good and bad radial right. and tangent forces. So right. it opens up the system to the higher frequency, high def data. Gotcha. So the crank is now in HD mode coming up to our computer. We can even take that data off of this computer, okay. dummy it down, so to speak, to amp plus power, push it out of this computer into your Garmin. Oh. I see people with a Garmin on their bars every now and then, and what they've ended up doing is the Garmin is used for total power, maybe balance, yeah. but speed, distance, heart, some other things, and using our computer for training power, right. force vector, 
for uh, efficiency, for interval intensity. There's all kinds of stuff in this computer a lot of people don't know about yeah. that are really telling you where you're at in power. Good. Talk about what the future is. So, you know, I'm coming into the winter, right? I, I need a training plan. I yeah. need stuff it's like that. that. Yeah, it's getting to that time. Talk about that at all. Do we have anything going on or yes. what, what we have? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we want to complete the system. Yep. And remember, we we would like to bring any road cyclist or mountain bike now. We've yeah. got cranks ready for all kinds of uh, uh, biking. But for the, for the cyclist who wants to learn how to improve yep. using power, yep. but not just power, how to use your heart rate correctly, right. how to use your cadence, how you to bet. use speed and distance and all the parts that come together that yep. we know make up the whole. Yeah. So we have a system called Training Assist. It's built into the computer, right. excuse me, and into our Cyclosphere mobile app. So right on your phone. Yep. You can bring up up to, uh, what do we have, three primary training, basic power and pedaling training. Bring up a module that could be um, your FTP. Right. Learn how to set an FTP. Go for it. Hit it. Understand why you did hit it or yeah. you didn't. Yep. Learn all that right on your smartphone right after the training. Yeah. Right after you ride. So um, it's kind of if you have a coach, great. That yeah. data is great for that coach. You can look at it and summarize very well. But right. if you just want to learn uh, the basics of uh, cycling technology. Yeah. Cycle computer, like I said, all the other electronics that are getting more and more on the bike, we're not going to stop. Right, me. right. They're coming. Um, to easily boil it down into real nice, easy bite sizes that you can understand yeah. and apply to your own riding. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's the one thing I love the most about not only are they being innovative, but really they're looking out for us. And when I say us, the beginner cyclist to intermediate cyclist to advanced. Yeah. They're not missing. They're not just going after the pros and the rest of us can take what's left. They're taking their technology so that we can all grow together, we can all read our data, and we can all become better cyclists. So if you haven't tried a Pioneer power meter, I advise you to get out there and try one. If you're in the space for a power meter right now, you've got to absolutely give these guys the hardest look you've ever looked at. And really, if your bike shop doesn't have it, don't give up. Go find somebody who does call them directly, whatever it takes, at least get your hands or go ride with somebody who has one because you will regret it once you've bought something else and then you go and find out what this can do. You'll absolutely kick yourself. I'm telling you right now, I spent years on another power meter and now that I've had this, I go, I lost one year, <laughs> if not two, that I could have had this data and a lot of things that I, I mean, Anyway, it, it, and, and the price point is awesome. Like you're, you're not, for what they've done, I can't believe it is at the price it is, uh, to be honest with you. So I can't thank you enough for your time today oh, and pleasure. going through and looking at my stuff and just all the little things. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for all the technology you guys are bringing to our space and for all of us. So keep doing it. It's get fun. out there, ride your bikes, keep cycling strong.